It's a great day to, it says here, praise the Lord. It's a great day to praise the Lord, walking in the light of the Lord. All three of these songs talk about saving, salvation, a strong tower. Run into a strong tower. You need to know some history. Why would you run to a tower? But in the old days, long time ago, in a city like the Red, Red Fort, Old City, it was a place of protection. It was, a, it was a high tower, and the armies of the enemy could never get inside those. If they got close, arrows would come down, fiery oil would come down. It was a safe place. Earth is not a very nice place sometimes. Now you guys are young. You believe in your mommy and daddy, you believe in your teachers, but once you get out, it's not a very nice place at times. In fact, I want to tell you a little bit about a time that was so bad on planet Earth that God said this. The Lord saw the wickedness of man that it was great. Every intent of the thoughts of his heart were on evil continually. It's like a bad movie. Everybody was evil. Darkness. There was no light. It was dark. The Lord was sorry he had made man on earth and he was grieved in his heart. The creator of heaven and earth reached a point with you and I where he was very sad. And the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land. It was a very, very sad day. But, there's always a but. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. There was a man named Noah. And he was just like anybody else except for three things. It says that this man Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his time, and walked with God. So all of this darkness, all of this terrible events, Noah was different. He was a righteous man. What does that mean? He knew what was right and what was wrong. It was very simple. What was dark and what was light. He had made a choice. He had made a choice. It may have included personal danger, definitely public ridicule. Everybody around him said, stupid, foolish, join with us, come. The party is here. Why are you there? Noah made choices, but what helped to make that choice was he walked with God. He walked with God. Who do you walk with? Who do you hold hands with in the park? Who do you run with? Who are you with? That is what decides much of your character. The friends you choose, the time you spend with other people, those are the ones that change your life for good or for evil. And Noah had made a choice. He was a family man. He had three sons. He had a wife. He had a normal life. But he had made a choice that I will do what is right. I will clean my heart. I will be blameless if I make a mistake. I will go to the, the king of kings and the god of gods, and he will take care of me. A strong tower. 
Noah had learned that. He went running to the living God. And so God confided in Noah a little bit of his plan. He said, mankind has become so bad, I'm going to remove them and start again. I'm going to remove all the bad and let's start fresh. In order to do that, Noah, I need your help. And I think you know the story. It says, the end of all flesh has come before May, and the earth is filled with violence because of them, and behold, I'm about to destroy the earth. Make for yourself an ark. Make for yourself a big boat, a ship. Uh, interesting choice. Now Noah has to scratch his head. What's a boat? What's, maybe he said that. He, he didn't live on a coastal city. Build a boat. Not just any boat, a very, very specific boat. He gave him all the details. Very, very, very big. Personal danger. It'll cost him some money. Public ridicule, for sure. They would think he has lost his mind. And I'm sure he had some self-doubt. But it says, Noah did according to all that God had commanded him, so he did. Noah had made choices when he was very small, when he got bigger. He was consistent. He walked with God. So he believed God. If God said it, I'll do it. Maybe his wife said, are you sure? His children said, Dad, are you sure? But they all worked together. And they built this amazing ship. The surprise of the ship was, it was being built where there was no water. And how were they going to take such a large ship and move it to the water? It was logically impossible. But God had said, it's going to start to rain. And we just say you know, showers of blessing and rain, rain. and the, This is going to be a different rain. It was going to be a rain unlike any. The earth would break open, waters would come from the bottom, and rains from the top. It had never rained on planet earth according to some of the understanding. It was a new time. So what does that have to do with you and me today? 2012. I suggest you and I both, all of us, learn to listen to God, learn to walk with God. This whole book is filled with salvation stories. Salvation. Saving this generation, saving your family, saving yourself. Noah saved his family. He did it, he built the boat, and they were saved. <clears throat> There's other stories. There's a woman named Esther. Fast forward thousands of years to a kingdom. A very, very ruthless man, a wicked man, had risen up to, to wipe out a whole people called Jews. One man, wicked. And he persuaded the king to make a law to say, these people are dangerous, we need to kill them. And the king said, okay. Didn't do his research. He said, okay. Esther was a woman in the king's court who was a Jew. Shh, don't tell anybody. She was quietly living her life actually as one of the wives of this king and she being a Jew was going to also lose her life. So her uncle suggested that you, Esther, must go into it and tell the king and 
save your people. She had a choice. There was personal risk. Nobody could just go in. She could be exposed. She could lose her life. The other friends could make fun of her. Oh, you're a Jew. Oh, you're one of those people. She had to make a choice. And, and her uncle said, maybe God puts you here for such a time as this. You are in Mount Carmel right now. You are young. You are learning. Maybe God puts you here 2012 for such a time as this. That you will become a savior. You will see something different. You will hear something different. You will be different. That is what God wants from you. Don't follow the herd. Don't follow the darkness. Come to the light. Walk, walk, walk in the light. Noah did it. Esther did it. And the Christmas story is filled with it. Mary and Joseph. You know those names? Mother Mary. Papa Joseph. Whatever you want to call them. They had a similar dilemma. They were put in a situation where there was going to be public ridicule, self-doubt, what's happening, who are you, who am I, all those questions you will face in life. I'm telling you, God is ready for you. He's saying, come to me. Mary had a baby, and she never spent time with Joseph. It was a miracle baby, and Joseph had a question mark. How is it possible? Mary had a question, how is it possible? But if you're doing it, it's possible. God is a God who saves. They named that child Jesus. They predicted it, it was prophesied, it was amazing. That is the God who you and I can know today. The same God of Noah, Esther, Mary, Joseph wants to be your God today. He is. Get to know Him. Listen to Him. That's why you are here. God has put you here for a short season of your life. You may never, ever have this time to hear God again. The key is, once you listen, what do you do? And like Noah, Noah did as he was asked to do. So if God says, come unto me, I'd say, let's come to him. If he says, let me take your burdens, I'd say, give him your burdens. If he says, cast your anxiety on me because I care for you, do it. Take all your worries. Take your concerns. Give them to Jesus. Because he's inviting you to do that. And your life will never be the same. I wish you much success. Enjoy the day. And enjoy the weekend. Thank you.